Today I'm going to show you how to derive spherical coordinates. Now the reason I said that this is for physics majors is because mathematicians and physicists disagree on which angle to call theta and which one to call phi. So in order to avoid that confusion, we're just going to use the physics convention. Now if you have the Griffith's e &M textbook, you can always just look in the back of the book and see what the conversion from Cartesian to spherical is, but it's nice to be able to derive it for yourself. So let's say that we have some vector v that we're expressing in terms of x, y, and z. Now this corresponds to being able to specify where a point in space is by going some distance in the x direction, some distance in the y direction, and then some distance in the z direction. A superposition of those vectors will give you the location of that point in space. Now that's nothing new, but there's another way of expressing this, in which case we can talk about the magnitude of the distance between the point and the origin that we call r. So if we're calling it the magnitude, what we're saying is that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. The other quantities that we need to define here are the angle from the z-axis to that r vector here. And this is where physicists and mathematicians disagree on what the angle is, because a mathematician will call this angle phi, and a physicist will call this angle theta, and that's what we're going to use. Uh, we can also talk about the angle between the x-axis and the projection of that vector onto the xy plane, so this angle here, that we're going to call phi. And you can think of this as if you were to just shine a light down this vector and it were to cast a shadow onto the xy plane. So a little bit of geometry will tell you that if this angle is theta, then this angle is also theta. And what we can do right now is we can find out what the sine of theta is. Sine of theta is just opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be this distance here, which we haven't named yet, and I'm just going to call it x prime. Why not? x prime, so opposite over hypotenuse, which is r. And then this brings us to x prime is equal to r sine theta. Now what we can also do is we can create another triangle here. So this distance is in the x direction, and this distance is in the y direction. Which tells you that this here is going to be orthogonal, those two angles are going to be orthogonal, and uh, we have a right triangle. So let's blow up this right triangle a little bit so we can see what we're looking at. We see that we have this going on. Okay, so here we have a right angle. This is just phi. We have x here and we have y here, and we just found out what this piece of the triangle was. It was r sine theta. Alright, so what happens if we take the cosine of this angle? If we take the cosine of phi, what we get is that this is equal to x over r sine theta. Multiplying both sides by r sine theta gives us that x is equal to r sine theta cosine phi. And that's the first conversion from Cartesian to spherical coordinates. The next thing we can do is also in this triangle, and we can just find out what the sine of phi is. If we do that, we see that sine of phi is equal to y over r sine theta. Little algebra gives, lets us know that y is equal to r sine theta sine phi. There's number two. The last component that we're going to find is actually the easiest one to solve for, the z component. So if we blow up this upper triangle here so that we can see it better, draws it smaller, okay, um, we can start building the components again. We know that this side here is r. We know that this dotted line here corresponds to r sine theta. This is theta. And this z direction here is purely in the z direction, so we're going to call that z. And what we can do is we can find out what the cosine of this theta is. We find that cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so z over r. And we get that z is equal to r cosine theta. And there we have the three 
equations converting from Cartesian to spherical coordinates. I hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you there.